Welcome to the seventh episode of a series where I'm upgrading my mini lathe. In this episode, we are taking a major step forward in building the main controller board. I've included a nine minute time lapse, after which we take a detailed look at the finished board. If you're not interested in the time lapse, feel free to skip past that bit. And don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe if you want to, as this really helps out the channel. So let's get into it. So I've got everything together here ready for the final assembly of the control panel. I spent about half a day sort of figuring out the layout and preparing a few bits and pieces. For example, this piece here, which is actually just encapsulating the potentiometer in a cage so that I can solder it directly to the board. It's still going to still use the standard connectors here, but it should make it very rigid. I've also programmed the bootloader into this different blue pill. I've installed some short pins so that it can use this PC, uh, this IC socket, standard IC socket. And I've modified the, uh, the jumper here so that it's the lowest possible so that it can actually sit underneath here. I've also just had to raise uh, this up a little bit by adding a little bit of uh, PCB. So I'll actually be just lifting it up by one PCB width and then everything will just fit underneath the display quite nicely. To this side here, this breadboard is the original test board we we're using with the uh, testing. It's basically the signal adaptation. And this breadboard here contains the pieces that I'm using to drive the buzzer and uh, LED indicator. It's, it's probably an overkill using that big MOSFET, but it'll definitely work, so I might as well just leave it that way. Other than that, it's just a matter of getting it done, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll go on into the, uh, the time-lapse and we'll see how it goes.
So I've managed to finish this board now. Through the magic of video editing, you've managed to miss all of the reworking that I've done and the repairs and the checking process. But in any case, all of this has been checked. Undoubtedly, there's probably going to be still a few mistakes in there, but uh, I think for now it's looking pretty good. That's the right way up there. Look at the final product here. Not too bad, I mean, it's always difficult to make this green board nice. You know, there's not too many cross lines and it's pretty flat. It's one of the objectives I have. And uh, it's fairly accessible overall. On this side here, you can see all of the parts. The chip socket I'm using for the blue pill, the headers here for the display, the header here for the LED, the connector for the buzzer. I've mounted the pot to the board, the buttons, there are a few discrete components for the signal management. Uh, I've also added a flat ferrite bead here as well just to try to knock down any spurious signals. I'm not sure how much that will help, but it'll help a little bit, I guess. So let's go ahead and put it together. The 74HC14. A little bit of fingering of the chips. Well, let's get a bit of static in there. And the blue pill, you can see the modifications here I've made. I've just added these pins. These pins here are actually just 0.7 millimeter wire. It's actually a little bit too thick. It should be closer to 0.5. But with a bit of brute force, I can get them to fit into that socket. And you can see here that the header here, which I've cut down the thickness of the plastic base here, the yellow part. And I've cut down the lengths of the pins. And I've cut down the size of this, this jumper as well. So it's much lower profile. So that's a bit of a pain. I guess if I just used a, a black pill, the whole issue goes away, but I want to try and stick with a blue pill for this project. But I've made it so that I can change to a black pill later. And really there's only one thing I needed to do is that on the blue pill here, uh, on the power arrangement, they have uh, ground and ground and 3.3.5 volts on this side and 5 volt ground and 3.3. But on the black pill it's a little bit more logical. They have 3.3 ground and 5 volts. So if you use both of these ground pins you're in trouble. So I purposely do not use this ground pin on the end here. So that if I want to switch this to a, a, a black pill it will work. Uh, I'm not sure how that goes for the timer arrangements. So I think it's pretty much the same. Let's put that in backwards. Get 
else have we got here? I've got this little, this is an old LED thing I had, so I just decided to use it for this project, but it, it could have just been LEDs or something else. Or... There's actually four individual LEDs in here, which I'm lighting up pretty brightly. So there's four resistors here. And I'm using the same MOSFET to drive the, um, the buzzer as well. So the buzzer and the LEDs will come on at the same time. So there's, the idea is that if it's running, there's a visual indicator other than the display. Uh, if there's a problem or something that needs to warn the operator. And there's an audible one as well, but I'm not sure if you're actually using the thing, how much you'll be able to hear the audible. So that goes in there like that. And the display. And I'm purposely not using this uh, last pin here because I wanted to make space for the screw hole here. So one pin is just floating. And there we have it, right? So I'll probably chop the ears off this uh, buzzer and have it so that it sits around about here somewhere. So the next up is I've got to do the wiring loom. So this wiring loom here. And I'll do a basic test. And uh, I also want to make a, a case, a, a plastic case for this. So I'll design something and 3D print it. So obviously before I could design the case, I needed to really get the layout fixed. So. And so hopefully it will just uh, be so that uh, I can slide it in and connect using this connector and remove it. And if I wanted to, I could use an extension cable to position it on an arm or something like that as well. So I can access the programming port right here. And uh, up, down buttons or plus minus buttons. And then four uh, menu driven buttons that will relate directly to the display here. So I finished making the official loom. As you can see here, there's a line for the power supply and the line for the motor area and the line for the optical sensor for the chuck. And uh, this line here will be the line for the current sense when I get that built. So the board here that I've made appears to be working well. Yeah, so the behavior looks to be pretty much as we saw with the uh, breadboard environment. So for now all of the primary hardware, except for the current circuit and the, uh, the wiring here, is pretty much complete. Well there you have it. Hopefully you can see how the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall together. And it's definitely going to be interesting to see what type of software I can come up with for this board. But before I can get too serious with the software, I need to get everything fixed in place. So for the next video, I'll be working to get the power supply mounted on the lathe. So I hope to see you then.